Local first. This is KTSM 9 News Today. Good morning, Borderland, and thank you for choosing KTSM 9 News Today. I'm Jay Russell. And I'm Susie Castillo. The city of El Paso is taking another step forward in vaccinating as many residents as possible. Today, the city will be running a vaccine pop-up event. Today's event will be at the El Paso International Airport. It will be running from 11 in the morning until 4 in the afternoon. The city says this allows the community to walk up, register, and get vaccinated. The city will also host several vaccine pop-up events over the next several weeks. Uh, there will be another one Saturday with two events, one being held at the El Paso Artists and Farmers Market in Anthony. The second will take place at the Beast Urban Park. Also remember, the city of El Paso will no longer require the public to schedule appointments to get the COVID-19 vaccine at the convention center. It's 501 and the city of El Paso says that they are resuming giving out the Johnson & Johnson vaccine this week. As we previously reported, the CDC and FDA recommended providers to hold off on giving the Johnson and Johnson vaccine earlier this month. Rare blood clots after the vaccine prompted the pause. Several states, including here in Texas, started giving those doses out again after the CDC gave providers the green light. El Paso's health authority says that they are advising people about the risks at the time if they get the vaccine, but adds the risk is extremely minimal. Most of the time you have no reaction or the reaction to the vaccine is going to be mild, mild to moderate, and it's going to resolve very quickly. So the important thing for people to know is that with the vaccine, no matter what manufacturer, we're keeping people away from the hospital, from the ICU. We're, keep, we're preventing people from passing away of complications of COVID-19. Leaders continue recommending the vaccine regardless of the manufacturer, especially here in El Paso. And today, Southwest University is offering free COVID-19 vaccine shots to anyone who wants one. The organization is hosting their event at the Geronimo location in East El Paso. The address is there on your screen. The university says the vaccines will be administered on a first-come, first-served basis. The event will start at 4 in the afternoon and will last until 9 in the evening. And also a new study on vaccine hesitancy about healthcare workers around the world shows nearly a quarter is hesitant towards the COVID-19 vaccine. But local experts say the hesitancy is lower in the U.S. KTSM 9 News reporter Carla Draxler is live in downtown El Paso with more information on that. Good morning, Carla. Good morning, Jay. Well, the new study done by New Mexico State University professor Dr. Jagdish Kupchandani combines the data from March of last year until the March of this year and states that about 23% of healthcare workers around the world are hesitant to take the vaccine. But Dr. Kupchandani explains healthcare workers is a broad term and includes everyone working in a hospital facility, not necessarily involving in direct patient care. He explains even healthcare workers can have the same questions questions and concerns about the vaccine. Dr. Armando Mesa, chief of infectious diseases with Texas Tech Physicians of El Paso says with many new studies and information coming out about, about the vaccines, healthcare workers are, that are not in infectious disease field may have trouble understanding them, just like the general population. But many of these concerns can be answered and usually don't outweigh the benefits of the vaccine. Healthcare workers are a part of the broader society. So they have the same types of fears and concerns. And we have to continue our messaging for the general population as well as healthcare workers. There's many reasons why people may feel uncomfortable of getting vaccinated. But at the end of the day, that should not be, at the end of the decision-making process, a reason not to get vaccinated. Dr. Mesa and Dr. Kupchandani explain open conversations and answering questions instead of shaming those who are hesitant is how vaccine hesitancy should be approached. Now, Dr. Mesa suggests if you are hesitant, find specific questions that you do want to find out about the vaccine, and usually you will find some good answers on the CDC's website. Reporting live in downtown El Paso, I'm Carla Draxler. Back to you. Thank you, Carla. Taking a look at the latest COVID-19 data for El Paso County, the Department of Health is reporting 174 new positive cases this morning. 13 more COVID-related deaths are also being reported. The death total now at 2,535. 
Now, there are now more than 2,400 active cases in El Paso County. Nearly 129,000 people are considered recovered. Taking a look at our hospital numbers today, 153 patients hospitalized for virus-related issues. That is an increase of 20 from yesterday. 48 are in the ICU, a decrease of 3. 30 on ventilators, that's another decrease of 3. The developing story, El Paso Police Department's bomb squad responded to a business in the Lower Valley after a suspicious item was found Wednesday evening. Workers inside the business were evacuated. Police blocked off Kastner Drive between Kessler and Diesel. We will bring you updates on air and online as information comes into our newsroom. Now to an update on the wildfire that's continuing to burn in Lincoln and the National Forest near Rio Doso. Fire crews say the size of the Three Rivers fire remains at 12,000 acres. Crews battling the fire say cooler, wetter weather resulted in this minimal fire growth yesterday. Officials say the fire is still about 5% contained. Crews say the fire has reached a scar from a previous wildfire, meaning there was less live vegetation to burn. The cause of this fire is still under investigation. Also happening today, President Joe Biden will be holding a drive-in rally. He's going to be in Atlanta where he's expected to highlight how he has delivered on his promises to the American people. The milestone comes one day after Mr. Biden's first address to a joint session of Congress. The 46th President and the First Lady Joe Biden are also planning to stop in Plains, Georgia to visit the former president, Jimmy Carter. It is 5.07 and we saw some light rain yesterday. What are we expecting to see today, Selena? Am I going to need to carry that umbrella around with me? You, might, you should definitely do that. Keep it handy with you because we're expecting to see moisture build up once again. We did start to see those showers move out towards the far, um, excuse me, the far east. And you know what? We're starting to see a new system come through. A lot of moisture still building up. As for areas in Las Cruces, El Paso and Socorro looking clear, but still seeing a lot of this moisture push in from the south. And this is going to help us out in the sense that we're going to start to see those chances for rain again. Not really until the afternoon hours, but still nonetheless in our forecast for today. Right now, 48 degrees in El Paso, 9 mile per hour wind speeds as for Las Cruces, 46 degrees and 10 mile per hour winds. Wind speeds much calmer than they have been the last few days, only about uh, 5 to 10 miles per hour throughout much of the area. However, Rio, Dorso, Rio Doso, Alamogordo, Cloudcroft, Guadalupe Pass, and Van Horn seeing those windier conditions. As for temperatures, 47 degrees in TRC, 48 in Deming, and 41 in Silver City. Sticking to the 40s throughout most of the area, and then you take a look at Cloudcroft, and we're dipping below freezing. Now, we are going to be quite chilly for today, very similar to what we saw yesterday, but in fact, we might be even cooler as that system continues to move out of our area much slower. Let's go ahead and take a look at what we're seeing just compared to the last 24 hours, shall we? 13 degrees cooler in Alamogordo, 12 in El Paso, 6 Las Cruces, and 9 in Juarez. Again, like I mentioned, we're expecting to be cooler today than we were yesterday and throughout much of the week, and I'm talking about temperatures about 20 degrees below low average. I'll have more details on that coming up in your full forecast. Let's go ahead and take a look at your TxDOT traffic cameras as of right now. This is live at Loop 375 at Rojas. Uh, you can see there is still one side of the freeway that is close. So if you do plan on traveling through that area, you want to make sure to find a different route or um, leave with enough time. It is 5.09. Coming up, federal officials searching Rudy Giuliani's Manhattan apartment. What they see. Then a recap of President Joe Biden's first address to a joint session of Congress. Stay with KTSM 9 News today. You're watching KTSM 9 News today with Susie Castillo, Jay Russell, and forecaster Selena Quintana. If you have a news story, call our hotline now, 915-533-KTSM. Reach us via social media or email us.